Today, I'm going to teach you exactly how to create this viral thumb wave effect where it looks like you're interacting with the screen. And yes, this will all be possible on the free version of DaVinci Resolve. There's also one major problem that people keep running into, but we're going to make sure we break that down. And thank you to Emi for sponsoring this video more on that later. So let's quickly address the elephant in the room and that's obviously the music. For this effect, the best song to use is gonna be Another One Bites the Dust and to use the dun 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 dun. But obviously on YouTube due to monetization, I can't use that song. So I have a similar rhythmic song uh, to do this edit to and let's go through it step by step. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to mark the beats of the music. Now there's two ways to do this. The easiest by far is to right click your audio and click show music beats. This will now analyze the audio and use AI to exactly show each beat of the song. But if you don't have that feature, you can also just listen to the song and go bah, 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 bah. You can also just place markers on the song itself and that will get you just as far. Okay, so let's grab our very first clip and place it onto the timeline. I already have some in and out markers set right here, so I'm gonna start the video in there and out right there and let's drag just the video onto the timeline. We don't need the audio. And I know that I want the speed ramping to start right on this beat right here. So I'm just gonna press M to place a marker just so you guys can see it a little bit more clearly. I'm just gonna go forwards two beats, one and two, and and that's how long I want the clip to be, but I have to speed ramp it so it lands before this marker. So to do that, I'm gonna press the clip, I'm gonna hit Control R, I'm going to add a speed point, and now I'm going to increase the speed just like so. I'm maybe gonna drag this out a little bit, increase the speed, and now we have a speed ramp. Let's smooth that by pressing the keyframe panel, dragging this up, opening keyframes, selecting this, hitting smooth, and then we're gonna drag this out a little bit, hold Shift, and drag this end out further so that we're getting sort of this cubic curve right here. All right, now let's place our second clip onto the timeline. So let's again, just drag just the video. And this is where the timing comes into play and is really important because we don't want these speed ramps to be insanely aggressive because it's just gonna be a little bit jarring. We want them to be the same for each and every clip. So the length of time that I found is good is to have four beats of music inside of each speed ramp. So what I mean by that is the original clip, I wanna maybe start right here because that's a nice shot of this dining room. I'm gonna cut out that start there and now I'm gonna scroll forward. That's one beat, two, three, and four. And now I'm gonna trim that up to there. So now I have a clip that's four beats long. And obviously with the first speed ramp, you can see that we're moving backwards and this clip is already moving backwards, so that is perfect. Next, we're gonna right click the clip and press new compound clip and hit create. Now on this first beat here, you're only gonna have to do this once. Let's place one more marker so that we can see that inside of the fusion page. Now inside of the fusion page, let's go to frame zero and add a time stretcher. That's automatically gonna set a keyframe on zero at frame zero. Now let's open the keyframe editor. Let's scrub forward to our next keyframe, which is right there. You can see it right in the keyframe editor here. Let's add a keyframe and leave it at zero. Now in this little box here, you can see that we have 17 frames of footage in between these two keyframes and we want to divide that in half. So I'm just gonna press slash two that's gonna divide it. We're now at frame 8.5. And now we want to input the last frame of the clip here, which you can find in the bottom left. So our compound clip is 67 frames long. So let's type in 67. Let's close our keyframes and open the spline editor. Let's select source time, zoom to fit. And you can see that we have this spike right here. Let's grab all the keyframes and hit S. And now let's turn it into this nice semicircle. That's a smooth speed ramp. So virtually what's happening in here is we're starting at the start of the frame. We're pulling back as if your thumb is pulling it back. And then we're going forwards again. And now align your playhead on your last keyframe. Go back to the edit page cut your clip and delete the excess. And now you can see we have this boomerang speed ramp. Let's go into the third clip, but we're not gonna have to do this from scratch every time because that time stretcher is going to be reusable. So let's drag our clip onto the timeline. And if we take a look at this previous clip here, we need to be going back into the clip. So we need to be moving forwards. So let's take a look at this next clip. We are moving backwards. So that's not what we want, but that is okay. So let's cut our clip right there because that's a nice frame of the bedroom. And now let's reverse our clip just like so. 
And now we are moving forwards into this bedroom, but let's make sure that we're four beats long. So that's one, two, three, and we're just a little bit short. So let's make it a little bit longer. And now this is really important that we turn this into a compound clip again, because that's going to bake in that speed change that we just did. With that done, let's go back into our first compound clip inside of the fusion page. We can close that off and let's grab our time stretcher, hit control C. And now we can go into the second clip, go into the fusion page, select our media one and hit control V and that exact same time stretcher, which again is synced to the music, is pasted in. Let's go to the last keyframe, which is right here, go back to the edit page, cut off the excess, and now we've just applied the exact same speed ramp, but technically in reverse uh, to the second clip, and it's gonna look seamless. If we take a look at this now, go out, in, out, and we can just repeat this process to match the thumb movement. So for really simple steps, you take your clip, you trim it to be four beats long, then you reverse it if you need to match the motion. After that, turn it into a compound clip, then go into the fusion page and paste the time stretcher node. Now go to the last keyframe of the time stretcher, go back to the edit page, and now delete the excess of the clip. And just repeat this process for all of the clips in the timeline. Okay, and before we move on, what's the real purpose of going viral? Now, as a editor or videographer like me, it's to build your personal brand and to land more clients. Now, a lot of my clients I actually meet through video calls and I want to look as professional from the start as possible. And that's where the eMeet Pixie comes in. It's a dual camera 4K webcam with a half inch Sony sensor inside so it looks incredibly good. It also performs incredibly well in low light scenarios and the autofocus has a response time of just 0.2 milliseconds which is faster than a lot of mirrorless cameras out there. You can adjust all of the parameters inside of the webcam and decrease the sharpening, which just makes it look a whole lot better. But obviously it's a PTZ camera, so this thing can move around and it's got some of the best tracking in the game. It can follow me around the entire office, but keep smooth momentum throughout the video so that it's not jittery as it's tracking me and it looks quite good. And there's a whole lot more features to talk about when it comes to this webcam. So I've actually posted a full review that you can find down below in the description or just press the card up here. As well in the description, there's a link to get the Emi Pixie for yourself and use code VANBEEK to get yourself 6% off if you want to upgrade your webcam. Back to the video. And now you can see we're getting this perfect repetitive movement in each of these clips because we're just copying the time stretcher. But now that we're getting into this video, we want to change it up so that the viewer sees something new again. So I will be showing you a full tutorial on how to do this in the future, but I've made these videos and I've implemented some videography skills and some tracking skills and AI to make these furniture animation videos of the houses that I've shot, just the empty houses that I've shot. So we're gonna drag that clip right onto the timeline. And this one's gonna work a little bit differently because we want them to start and then we want to speed ramp forwards on the beat instead of speed ramp to the next clip. And what I mean by that is with this clip selected, let's go forward and the furniture animation starts right about there. So let's go backwards a couple frames, hit control R and add a speed point. Now we're going to scrub forward in our timeline to the end of the furniture animation, which is roughly right there. Let's add another speed point and drag that in, trim up this clip a little bit. And now let's zoom into our timeline and make this a little bit faster, just like so, so that we're really getting a speed ramp just over this beat right here that we're lined up with. Let's open the keyframe panel, pull this up a little bit, ease them in and out, selecting both. I'm gonna drag them like this and now hold shift and hold shift on the other side and we're getting this smooth peak right in the middle. And now you can see on the beat, we're getting this furniture animation happening, but we are missing some movement at the start of it because if we take a look at the clips before, we should be pulling out at the start of the clip. So we're gonna simulate that with an adjustment clip. Let's go into our effects panel, go into effects and grab an adjustment clip just like so. Zoom in on our timeline again, let's line that up right there. And then roughly let's go right before this speed ramp, which is right about there. Let's hit control B. And now let's open this adjustment clip in the fusion page. Let's hit control space and add a transform node. And at the start, let's increase the size to two. Let's add a keyframe. Let's go to the last frame of our footage and set the size to one. Now open the spline editor, open size, zoom to fit, control A, S, and let's drag this down so that it starts off really fast with the scaling and then eases into its resting position. And now if we take a look at this, 
we're pulling out and we've got a smooth transition between the two. But then at the end of that, we need to go out again to keep the same momentum of the video because our thumb is not gonna switch directions. We're gonna be keeping the exact same momentum and rhythm. So here it goes out, in, and then it needs to go out again. So let's just drag over this adjustment clip by holding Alt and dragging it over. Let's open it in the Fusion page. Let's reset this transform node. Frame zero, let's set the size at one. And then on the last frame, let's set the size to maybe 0.75 or so. So make sure that we change the edges from canvas to mirror so that we don't have this blank space happening. Let's hit zoom to fit on our spline editor, control A, S, and now we want the speed up to happen right at the end. So we're gonna drag this handle like so, and now we're pushing out, in, out. Now let's work on our next clip of the exact same effect. This time we're renovating a kitchen. Again, there will be a tutorial in the future. So if you wanna see that, make sure you subscribe and stick around. So right before the beat, let's hit control R, let's add a speed point, drag forward to the end of the renovation, which is right there, add another speed point, speed that up drastically. And let's drag this last cut to this last beat here. Let's smooth this out, smooth, grabbing both, easing them the same, and then holding shift to get some further easing. And we've already done the animating with these first adjustment clips, so we can literally just copy these over to our second clip, just like so. All right, and let's quickly play this back and see what it looks like. That looks good. We're getting this in and out motion, again, matching the movement of the thumb. Now, let me quickly do the same speed ramping to these next few clips. All right, I finished that on two more renovation clips, and if we play that back, we're going in, out, in, out, in, out. But now we're going to switch it up again just to keep the viewer a little bit more engaged. So our next set of clips are actually going to be sort of orbiting, going side to side. So if we take a look at our clip number 14 and drag that onto the timeline, you can see that we're moving from left to right around this bed. First things first, let's make sure that the timing is the same as prior. So one, two, three, four beats, just like so. And let's shorten this up. But I want this to play in reverse just because I think it'll match the motion just a little bit better. So let's reverse this clip and turn it into a new compound clip. Again, we're going back into the Fusion page. We can use the exact same time stretcher that's still saved to our keyboard, hitting Control-V to paste it. And then on frame 17, go back to the edit page and cut the excess. And as you can see, we're sort of getting smooth motion, but we're not all the way there. And that's because one clip is zooming out and the other clip is moving side to side. So let's open this last adjustment clip that we copied over and we're starting here and then we're zooming out to this uh, size right here. But instead of only zooming out, let's go back to frame zero. Let's also set a keyframe on the center. Now let's go to frame number nine and set the center a little bit offset to the right just like so, because our next clip is moving uh, to the left. So we wanna push this off to the right and that's gonna simulate the same motion. So let's make sure we ease this as well by selecting these keyframes, hitting S and then dragging this curve down just like so. And now if we play this back, we're getting way smoother motion. It actually looks like we're pulling away from the bed uh, and it looks really, really smooth. Now we should be moving to the right. So with video 15, let's drag that onto the timeline. And this is just like before, we're gonna count four beats. So one, two, three, four. We're gonna cut the clip. I think that looks good right there. And we are already moving in the right motion. So we're just gonna new compound clip this, open it in the Fusion page, Control V, go to the last keyframe, go back, hit Control B to cut it and then delete the excess. All right, so I've duplicated the same effect for all of the orbiting shots, and that now looks really, really good. Now we're slightly switching the shots and we're gonna switch to sort of these up and down shots. So, and I did those in the bathroom of the showers of the houses that I filmed. So if we take a look, we're sort of zooming in on this shot, but we're pulling away from the shower in this shot. So we are going to reverse that. We're gonna go up, we're gonna count four beats, one, two, three, four just like so. We're gonna new compound clip this. Let's go back into the Fusion page, hit Control V to paste our time stretcher, go back to the edit page and cut off the excess. And that already looks pretty good, but there's sort of this upward momentum in this second clip here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take this adjustment clip right here, drag it over, and now go into the Fusion page with this adjustment clip. I'm just gonna reset this transform because we don't need it as is. On frame zero, let's set a keyframe on center and size. Let's go to the 
the last frame. Let's increase the size just a little bit so that we have a bit more uh, footage to work with. And let's drag this down, maybe just right around there so that we have a bit of the canvas showing. Let's make sure we change this to mirror. Now let's open the size, hit S, smooth this out just like so. And the same thing with the displacement, we wanna add the exact same curve or as close as possible. And now if we play this back, we can sort of see that we're shifting up into this next shot and it's quite a bit smoother. And let's just quickly finish off the rest of the footage. All right, and now we have just completed the entire song. So if we take a look at this, it looks quite good. Obviously, we still have one really big problem to solve and we don't have the thumb animated right at the start. So we need to work on both of those two things. Now, the first big problem that I want to solve is motion blur, because although this looks quite good, it's a little bit too jarring because there is absolutely no motion blur with these really fast speed ramps. So to fix the motion blur, I'm gonna drag on an adjustment clip over top of our speed ramp, and I'm going to trim it to just the speed ramp, just like so. Now in the effects tab, I'm gonna search for motion blur pro, which is my pre-built motion blur preset, apply it, and just like that, we have really good motion blur. Let's just drag it over so it's centered over the speed ramp. And now we have smooth motion blur from one frame to the next. In this case, I'm gonna place a marker on my adjustment clip so that I can simply align my playhead over the next speed ramp and drag the adjustment clip over, just like so. Now, if you wanna get this preset for yourself, link will be down below in the description. As well, there will be a link to the video where I show you exactly how to build the speed ramp, but I suggest you save some time and just get the preset for yourself. And now for the thumb animation at the start of the video, there's two methods you could use. So you could animate it by hand, or you could video your own thumb doing it and key out your thumb and input that as a layer to make it look even better. And I'm actually just gonna give you access to the thumb animation for free. All you have to do is follow me on Instagram and send me a DM with thumb, and I will send you a link to the folder that includes this thumb animation for absolutely free. But to start, to show you the animation method, let's grab an adjustment clip and drag it over top of our timeline. And quickly, with the timeline selected, let's hit M on each beat of the music, just like so. And now in the adjustment clip, I'm just gonna show you roughly. All you'd have to do is you'd add a background, just like so, add a polygon node, draw a rough mask of what a thumb would look like, maybe something like so. Let's change the color to white and reduce the opacity. Now let's add a transform, move the pivot down to the base of the thumb right there, open our keyframe panel and zoom in so we can see all of these markers we just set. And now halfway in between these markers, our thumb should be at resting positions. So to start, we're zooming out here at this second marker. So right here, it should be at the top rotation. So let's rotate our thumb up, maybe just like so. And then halfway in between the next, you can see we're moving backwards. Let's rotate the thumb all the way down. And now next, let's go forward a couple frames and move it back up. Now let's open our spline editor, select angle, grab both of them, hit S, and we need to add some extra easing. So let's change the easing and put it at 60 for both in and out. And now simply grab these keyframes and set a loop like so. And now lastly, you can just use the merge for this. Let's just move it in a little bit so that we don't have the edge of the thumb showing up there. And if we go back to the edit page, now we have an animated thumb. And for the actual footage of a thumb animating up and down, pretty much what I did is I just filmed my thumb to the beat of the music. I then keyed it with a Delta key, input that into a background, smoothed out the edges, and the end result was this. And as you can see, it looks quite good. I do wanna turn down the opacity just a little bit so it's not too jarring, and then it just fades out over time. Now, just keep in mind that when you're doing this with Another One Bites the Dust or a different custom song that you've picked, you might have to adjust the timing of each of these clips to better suit your video. And if you followed all of these steps, you should have an incredibly interactive video that has huge potential to go viral. And if you guys do wanna support the channel, I genuinely believe that this motion blur plugin that I've built with Jake Whip is the best solution in Resolve for motion blur. So make sure that you check it out from my store. It's on sale for 20 bucks right now, regular 35. So grab it while the sale lasts. But thank you guys so much for checking out this video. Thank you to Emi for sponsoring this video. And as always, Jesus loves you. See ya.